They need the water. The people are around. All these people. Gone missing, hasn't been found. There's something more. Is Amber Lee Cruikshank still alive? She didn't wander off. Did she die accidentally? Just keep getting struggles. Or was she murdered? She would just like fit it under somebody's arms. I believe in my heart of hearts that she is alive. To this day, police still don't know what happened to little Amber Lee. Tonight, three psychics will turn to the spirit world for answers. I am not a believer in psychics. You get snap gone. I'll get you back, you bitch. Can the psychics find answers for Amber Lee's grieving mother? She belongs with the family. Ah! You have got no right to either. And clues to how she disappeared. Several days after the reading, Nikki made a startling revelation. Today's a special day for Amber. This is the most baffling case that I ever worked on. She's just there, and then she's gone. Amber She just disappeared. She's with me no matter where I go. I, I got a portrait tattooed on my leg many years ago. Amber Lee's disappearance was the darkest hour in the deeply troubled life of her mother, Nikki Cruikshank. I had a sort of a traumatic experience happen to me where at 14 years of age, a family friend um, had enticed me into his room and raped me, so... It sort of threw things out of kilter and that was it, you know, just turned to drugs and alcohol. It was just something that made me happy and took the pain away and you could just, you know, you sort of felt normal. By 15, Nikki had already left home. She got caught up with gangs and started working in a brothel. Well, I didn't think I had much choice, you know. My body had already been abused and I thought, well, what's the harm in doing that and getting paid for it? So, yeah. I started out being what you would call a prostitute. To cope, Nikki turned to stronger intravenous drugs. When she was only 17, she had her first child, Harley. Three years later, she became pregnant with Amber Lee. Hmm, shock. Um, didn't really know how or what I was going to do, whether I was going to have the baby or... Um, didn't believe in abortions at the time, so, you know, that wasn't an option, but I did consider adopting. When I found out she was a girl, that was... Yeah, no, I couldn't. When Amber Lee was still a baby, Nikki formed a new relationship with James. They bought a house in the tiny settlement of Ortoto, near Invercargill. I lived with them in Te Tao, Tao um, I think it was 1990, 91, and... It was kind of an arrangement between us, like I didn't have to pay board or anything like that in, in exchange for looking after the kids. Yeah. Amber Lee was bright and bubbly. Blonde hair, blue eyes, rosy red cheeks. Always had rosy red cheeks, could never figure out why. And you could put her hair up in their little picky tails. And... That's so cute. Beautiful blonde hair. We used to try and put it up into, put her hair up into hair ties and she hated hated having her hair done. When she was unhappy, <laughs> she would throw a temper tantrum and screw up her face and scream and kick and carry on, you know, just pat a cake. <laughs> she didn't like getting picked up by someone she didn't know. She had to be familiar with you. She was very shy around um, strange people. She had a very strong personality. Always had a solemn look on her face, like when she was concentrating on doing things, it was kind of tight-lipped and, yeah, no, she was definitely a little character. She's going my way, no running my toes over. She had a pink bike, three-wheeler one. She used to love that and a big bird. Um, still got the big bird that she used to have as a, as a baby. Really good. Amber Lee was a ray of sunshine in Nikki's life. She liked doing baking and getting her hands in there and doing a bit of baking. So, yeah, 
When Amber Lee was two, Nikki had a third child. I mean, through the same issues of whether I wanted another child or not, but I thought my relationship was quite stable, so yeah. Went ahead and had Danny. Then um, we decided to, to move. We bought a house bus and decided to leave, sell the house and change our lives around. Changing their lives meant making a break from their drug world associations. The family wanted to make a fresh start on the west coast. They planned to visit friends in Kingston on their journey north. Just before setting off, Nikki and James received a warning from a clairvoyant to watch out for their little girl. The clairvoyant predicted that a fight was coming, they would have car trouble, the letter K was significant, and that James would break his arm. Prior to leaving Kingston, my partner did break his arm, um, riding a horse, which happened to get the better of him. And it was on the way to Kingston that um, the brakes were put on and the bike that we had on the back had gone through the bus window and actually smashed it all. So that was true. And then, of course, when we travelled through to Kingston and how the letter K was very important, well, I believe the letter K stood for Kingston and maybe I should have taken more heed. Next, the family's new beginning turns to tragedy. It's just kind of one of those things where, for a moment of time, nobody actually uh, realised that they were the last one to really be in charge of Amberley. <laughs> in the 19th century, Kingston, on the shores of Lake Wakatipu, was a bustling gold rush town. The Kingston Flyer steam train is all that remains of that illustrious legacy. When Amber Lee Cruikshank and her family arrived in Kingston on October the 17th, 1992, the sleepy town was home to only 50 people. Former Detective Senior Sergeant Warwick Walker pieced together the events of that fateful afternoon. Yes, yeah, so on, on the day that Amber Lee went missing, remembering that back then this was pretty much all grass just with a, as I say, a, a track from where vehicles had been driving on it. Uh, Nikki and James and the family had, had come in from this end of the lake in their bus and really pulled the bus up around about here. Yeah, hey, yeah, man. Yeah, man. And during the day when they'd been with their friends, you know, um, they'd been down on the lakefront here and you can see it's, it's only really a very short distance from the house. Friends of ours were going to take the boat out and do water skiing. Um, I wasn't quite keen on the water skiing side of it because, you know, it's an icy cold lake, so we just sort of sat there and watched. Um, Amberly did one part of it remove her shoes and put her feet in at the water's edge and, oh no, that was just, that was too cold, icy freezing cold. People have been coming and going on the boat and there have been a number of boats along the, along the foreshore that day. Hello. Hello. Sausage. 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 We decided to have a barbecue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was about five, I was five. We had a barbecue with the friends and other people that were there. Down the road, down there, eh? The people had been having a barbecue and, and, and drinking, and Amber Lee had been um, playing on the grass. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. Came off the <laughs> After tea, we took Amberly for a ride out mm. on the boat and she was sitting on my knee and, yeah, she loved it. Just cracking through the waves, you know, she thought it was cool. With dusk approaching, the group split up to do chores. They decided to do some repairs on the house bus. Yeah. Others were putting the boat away and people were just tidying up the house that they were staying at. It was just kind of one of those things where uh, perhaps, you know, for, for a moment of time, nobody actually uh, realised that they were the last one to really be in charge of Amberley. Nikki and James had left Ortoto to get away from drugs, but opium poppies growing in the back garden proved too tempting. Um, we were going to have a taste that evening, so I was going to go and bleach poppies while... The other mate's girlfriend was going to have a shower do washing and everyone was going to keep an eye on the kids. So hold up. 45 minutes passed before James went out to see how Nikki was getting on. 
Nothing's coming out of them, James. I told you. I said very frustratingly, this is a waste of time. I told you there's nothing in there. Um, what's Amberly doing? And Amber he believes she was know, inside watching TV. Watching TV. Oh. I went and had a look. Amber! Come on, honey, I'm going to give you a bath. Amberly? She wasn't inside. Are you hiding from me? I checked the bedrooms. Amber! She wasn't there. I started calling out to her. Amberly! I had no answer. Emily! Amber! Nikki then checked outside. Amber! I'm calling, she's not answering. Emily! She's not here, there's something wrong. Amber! You get a consciousness, I suppose, that something, you know, something's not right. Emily! Where are the children? Help me find her. Nikki got upset very, very quickly, as a, as a mother normally would. Emily, Amber, Emily, Amber. His little two and a half year old child had disappeared right next to a lake. I was starting to go into panic mode. Amber. Oh, fuck. Emily. Everyone's going. It's all right. You know, she'll be. She'll be here. She can't have gone far. The alarm was raised pretty quickly. Emily. We all started looking and then I started knocking on doors. And they went and, you know, roused the neighbours and the neighbours roused their neighbours. Emily! She can't be far. Maybe she, maybe she's in the toilets. Maybe she's just gone up to the boat room poor. Emma! Emily! Someone's got her in their house and they're just waiting for me to knock on the door and say, here, well, she was wandering around. The whole community very quickly was involved in a, in a search around the Kingston area for her. And then around about 9pm that night, they contacted the police. The police soon swung into action. It was a frustrating time for Nikki. I was um, not allowed to look for her anymore. I had to stay put at the house, um, just in case anything turned up sort of thing. Oh, I felt absolutely hopeless. I hated it. There aren't a lot of houses in Kingston. Uh, the searchers went up and checked all the doors to see if they were locked checked underneath those houses, checked in the long drop toilets if they had the long drop toilets, um, and then proceeded much further out um, into the bush. And, and the searching went, you know, a lot further out than what you would assume that a, a two and a half year old could really naturally have walked in the time that we think the period of time that she went missing. Amber. Everybody else was looking. Didn't think for one minute that Emma. she was not going to turn up. Please, please, come on, please, baby. Please, baby. Oh, you fucking... You fucking... <laughs> the next day was even rougher. All they want to do is, is give you medication to sedate you, you know, and all you want to do is just find your little girl, you know, so... It's, yeah, really quite devastating. <sighs> the hunt for Amber Lee continued in the most obvious place. The police and search and rescue naturally thought that when, when they couldn't find her, that this is where um, she had probably gone. You've got one of the biggest lakes in New Zealand, anybody says, well, she's in there. Could have been quite easy for a child to have been drawn down to the water uh, and then stumbled and fallen in. The way she was with water, Emily was funny when it comes to taking a bath. She hated water on her face. She hated having her face washed. I wash your face. I want to wash I didn't believe for one minute that she was in the lake and that she was drowned. Nikki's instincts were confirmed when police divers conducted a thorough grid search of the lake. It was conclusively ruled out, as best it could be, that she wasn't in the lake. So we were really left with a real mystery. If she wasn't in the lake and she wasn't in the surrounding countryside, where was she? It then raised suspicion that uh, foul play may have been involved. There were scientific uh, tests carried out. There were luminal tests uh, carried out to see if traces of blood could be found on roadways and buildings, uh, because there'd also been a suggestion that she had been the victim of a hit and run. Police explored the possibility that Amber Lee had been abducted. She was only tiny, so she would just, like, fit it under somebody's arms. I believe she, she would have screamed <laughs> if something sinister or something had happened. Had somebody stopped uh, in a car 
and, and picked her up. They would have taken a lot of risk to do so because you can see how um, open the houses are here and how easy it is for anybody really to look onto the road. We knew that they'd only travelled to Kingston on that day and no one knew of their travel, so it, it was unlikely that someone within the wider family or friends had taken Amberley for whatever reason. The only other scenario is that, that somebody in Kingston took her by the hand, took her off somewhere and did something with her. The focus that really moved from one of a missing person to uh, what would be called a homicide inquiry. Police placed under surveillance a local person who'd met Amber Lee that afternoon. There was one person who we were, I suppose, very interested in, in terms of um, their movements and, and their discussion as to, you know, where they had been and what they had done. Police could not find any evidence to link this person to the disappearance of Amber Lee, so they cast their net wider. It would be fair to say that there are people that would be, still be of interest to this inquiry today. The little town of Kingston was searched... For Nikki refused to believe her daughter had been murdered. Her appeals for information were broadcast across New Zealand. If you have my little girl, I'd like her back. If you know where she is, could you please let your nearest police station know, or Queenstown Police? I love her. She belongs with her family. And you have got no right to have her heard it on the radio um, I just went oh, shit can I rewind that and see if it was right was it Amber or not you know you're upset you're tired you're frustrated you're angry you know um, she's not being found you know one minute she's there and next minute she's gone The official search may be over, but the Crookshank family are not giving up. Being the way I was and just wanting the answers, of course, I'd go off and try and find her. And for a month and a half, we looked all around Kingston. She was trying to be strong. I, yeah, like it was. But yeah, she was still really devastated and cut up. And yeah. Days rolled into weeks, and the trail went cold. Yeah. Bad memories, you know, it's very painful knowing that you went there, you were happy one minute and then your whole life has just been turned around the next and it's just this big empty space and you've got no answers. December we um, had a memorial service for her, we had a plaque made up. Amberley Rose Crookshank, missing on the 17th of October 1992, presumed drowned and uh, we don't know. Nikki left Kingston soon after. She'd arrived with a young daughter, but left with only questions. Where did I go wrong? Why did this happen to me? You know, is it some vendetta against me? Am I ever going to find the answers? You know, um, is she dead? Is she alive? There is no body. There is no great leads. Uh, there is no great suspect list. Uh, every other thing that is associated to your normal homicide inquiries, uh, we don't really have any of those. You know, I've got to say that in the 24 years that I spent in the police, this is the most baffling case that I ever worked on. While police are convinced they are dealing with an unsolved murder, Nikki still can't bring herself to accept this. I believe in my heart of hearts that she is alive, that someone out there is taking care of her. Um, no doubt they've given her a better life than what I probably could have, but still, she's my little girl. <laughs> she's a part of me and, you know, she's out there and she sees this. I just wanted to know that we've never given up on, on finding her and I still won't give up on finding the answers to what happened to her that day. Next, the Sensing Murder psychics appeal to the spirit world for information about Amber Lee's disappearance. There's huge arguments. All I can hear is people fighting. She's trying to reach out to Mum, but she can't get to Mum.
Many psychic mediums claim to be able to tune into spirits of the living as well as the dead. Nikki Cruikshank is convinced her young daughter is still alive. Now two gifted psychics will attempt to discover what really happened to little Amber Lee. A New Zealand and an Australian psychic have been selected. 75 psychics from across New Zealand were tested. A little known solved murder was chosen for the testing procedure. Presented with only a photograph of the victim, the psychics were asked to produce details of the crime, the location and the killer. Of the 75 psychics tested, only three were able to describe intimate details of the case. One of these New Zealand psychics, Kelvin Cruikshank, has been chosen to investigate the Amber Lee Cruikshank case. Despite sharing a surname, they are not related. Kelvin works full-time as a psychic medium, staging live shows, workshops and personal readings to help people connect with their dead loved ones. If the family gets help, just by knowing that their child is safe or knowing that they can come home or they can put that person to rest, then that's all that matters. 100 Australian psychics were also tested. One of these, Deb Webber, will assist in the Amber Lee Crookshank case. Deb tours Australia and New Zealand with a live show demonstrating life after death as a reality. She is also a magazine columnist. I see spirit as flashes. Uh, like a jigsaw puzzle. I should see hair, then probably glasses, um, a height. So it comes in segments or it can be a running film. Amber Lee's mother believes she's alive, but the psychics have not been told this or any other details of the case. They do not know the location of the case in advance and are only told their destination at the airport. Each psychic is filmed non-stop in one day. They are kept under constant supervision to prevent them researching the case. Correct statements can be, but are not always, confirmed during the readings. From time to time, psychics offer information. Uh, I'm yet to see any uh, fruit born from the information that they've given over the years. I am not a believer in psychics at all. I watched the series. There was not one show that I didn't miss. Um, I was very intrigued in how these psychics come up with the information that they came up with. In a Queenstown hotel room on different days, Deb and Kelvin begin their readings. Communicating with a two and a half year old will be difficult, and it's not even certain she is dead. To make it even more challenging for the psychics, former detective Warwick Walker, who headed the case, will be observing both reads. To begin, each psychic is given a downturned photograph of Amber Lee. Okay, um... Theme up, like, theme, okay. Like, why? <laughs> I, th I think the reason why I've got a female energy here is because of the gentleness that comes with it. I'm getting a female energy. No, I just won't leave me. And also hearing lots of little giggles around me, so I'm picking up a child, and I can tell that by the laughter. This just said birthday, and then she said May. Jennifer, March, May, May. You yeah, May. Okay, so there may be a birthday in May. Amber Lee was born in May. I don't know why I keep going back to like really young. She's taking me really young. She's taking me right back to being really young, little girl. She's telling me she can walk, so she must be of an age where she can walk and she can talk. And she's just little though, she's just little. And she's really cute. Two, three, two, two. She's hard with her dates. She doesn't know what March, April, May means. <laughs> she's, like, she's like two and a bit. Amber Lee was two and a half when she vanished. I keep getting flashes of fair hair. She's got quite fine hair. Okay. No, she's just making me feel as if she says Sandy, but then goes into blonde later. So Sandy blonde. She keeps putting her hair up too, which is interesting because I think... So she could put it up in a ponytail if she wanted to. She's cute as a button. She says, like my eyes, so she must have had blue eyes as well. She's making me cover in flour. <laughs> um, just normal child behaviour, um, kid-like times where I need to acknowledge the fact that she's tried to get in there and get some cooking done, but it's white powder. She, um, she's saying to me, A for apple. Her name starts with an A. Thanks. So I'll write it down. A. An M. R. E. 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 R. Do it again. Do your alphabet. 
Right, yeah. It's all right, darling. There's a letter missing in the middle. A, B, B. B, A, B. A, B. She says, I only know B, A, B, B, A, B, C's. Amber. Amber? That's correct. She's just going on a different... My last name's Crookshank, Calvin. Crookshank, 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 Crookshank. <laughs> like me. Like me. She's giving me a line. So I have to go amber something like that. <clears throat> Two E's, maybe. Amber Lee. My last name's just like you. I can't spell. She says I can't spell it. <laughs> I couldn't spell my last name till I was a little bit older or two. Between them, the psychics have channeled the full name of Amber Lee Crookshank. I got a bike earlier. She likes animals. I know that. But she, I got a bike, and I saw the bike on the step. Her bike's pink. Deb has picked up on Amber Lee's favourite toy. Okay, she's saying there's a three connection as well. Three, so uh, trying to explain three. Three. Usually when I get numbers like this, it's a signification of siblings. Amber Lee was one of three children. She had two brothers. She must be with her mum, living with her mum. What I've got is actually just a taken away from Mum because I'm getting pulled away and she's trying to reach out to Mum but she can't get to Mum. I don't think Dad was there at the time. I can't see where the Dad is because Dad seems to be out of picture. Completely. It's like he doesn't even exist. OK, yeah. Taken back, I can still see the father but when I'm getting a vision of them, I've actually got them apart from each other. Amber Lee's parents separated when she was a baby. Nikki moved in with James soon after. <laughs> Must have heard arguments and everything, like in the family, because I get... Um, <laughs> disagreements and fighting around the house. There's huge arguments. All I can hear is people fighting. The psychics have picked up on the turbulent family life that Nikki and James were determined to leave behind. They also pick up on other aspects of Nikki's background. It's interesting because she said Mum didn't know who Mum was. Mum was out of it a fair bit. So there's drugs involved in Mum's life. It's like I, I feel like I have to protect Mum. Uh, she needs looking after. Next, the psychics try to answer a grieving mother's question. Is Amber Lee still alive? Amber? Amber? Amber Lee. She's like two and a bit. You're getting flashes of fair hair. Dad seems to be out of picture. There's drugs involved in Mum's life. Yeah. Without even looking at a photo of Amber Lee Crookshank, the psychics have picked up her appearance, age, full name and accurate details of her family background. Now they ask the spirit of the little girl to take them back to the day she vanished. Take me later up at part of the year. Later part of the year she's taken me in, she's pushing me up. Oh, so if I go... Tenth month, two back. October. Looks like a one. One of the numbers is a one. Which date is it, sweetheart? What's the other number here? Seven? Show me that. Show me that. Okay. One and a seven, seventeenth. Do you know the years? Well, I know it's 1990-something. Um, oh. One, two. Sorry, she's flipping through the years. One, two. 92. 92. Has to be 92. Deb is correct. Amber Lee went missing on the 17th of October, 1992. Amber, go back to that day. I need you to go back to that day. She just wants to play. There's a veranda out the front. She used to like playing on the veranda. There's only a small... The view's really nice too. She says the view's just really special. It's really wow. It might be a little bit run down this place, but it certainly is a beautiful view. I'd pay to live there. Have some tomato sauce. And she's on holiday. <laughs> Playing. 
seeing the water, the beach, the sand. So they were near the water, wherever they were staying. Amber Lee was holidaying on the shores of Lake Wakatipu in the tiny settlement of Kingston. It doesn't seem to be a big town or anything. It's only a small town. She's not showing me Queenstown, though. It's interesting. Kingston is a 40-minute drive from Queenstown. It's with the boat, sweetie. She says it's a pretty boat. OK. What's the boat got to do with anything? Different faces. And it's interesting because when they're coming in out of the house, she's just sitting there, um, but she's outside. She's making me feel as if mum's around, family's around, people are around. I get a lot of chatter. See, with all these people, I still get a lot of talking. Um, even flashes of Amber's mum talking to people. She doesn't seem to know all the faces. Strangers. It's almost as if the back of the house is the front of the house and the front of the house is the back of the house. If you know what I mean, it's like, here's the road, here's the, the house, the back entrance. You walk through it out into this little veranda and over, overview of the lake. If you can understand that, the, the back of the house by the road, in theory, should have been the front of the house, but it's not. Something about mum being busy. So mum wasn't keeping an eye on her. She just disappeared from that house. Oh, I'm asking, how do you just vanish? <laughs> She's making me feel as if she was stolen. Grabbed. Or well, something here. Grabbed. Taken. She keeps saying stolen just yelling it at me, stolen, stolen, stolen. So obviously we're picking up on the fact that somebody's abducted her and she hasn't returned home. Both sensing murder psychics have reached the same chilling conclusion, that Amber Lee was abducted. Police considered this possibility, but could never work out how. They'd only travelled to Kingston on that day and no one knew of their travel, so... Had somebody stopped uh, in a car, and, and picked her up, they would have taken a lot of risk. It was unlikely that someone within the wider family or friends had taken Amber Lee for whatever reason. Now the psychics try to answer the question police never could. How was Amber Lee abducted? Again, she's just there and then she's gone. Shrub, bushes. Where am I? Because there are so many people coming and going. But there's something about someone coming into the front yard and then she, I can see her getting up and walking to, to the road area. There's a road just right there in front. They picked her up from under everybody's noses and that's just mind blowing. Come over the back, through the back. <laughs> gone. She's been swooped up. She doesn't seem to be scared. It's interesting because he's got a familiarity about him for her. So she's seen him before or knows him. OK. I just asked if she knew who took her and she nodded her head. She's telling me she knew who it was. OK? She knows who took her. Why should you give me bounded arms then? Placed in the vehicle, picked up and put in. <laughs> getting really quite agitated. Hand over the mouth, covered up. She keeps wanting me to cover herself up. Um, and it's, you know those oil skin coats that you can get? Um, it's the smell of one of those. I think basically she was just um, covered up or smothered or whatever it was in the, in the, the vehicle. She didn't wander off. She did not wander off. She did not wander off. She was abducted from the back of her house, taken into a vehicle. Even a four-wheel drive connection. There's a big, a big vehicle. It's either a van or a four-wheel drive. It's not new. It's old. Actually, I think there's some other colours on it for some reason. Because um, I get the white, but I'm getting blends of colours coming through. There seems to be a, it's like a musty colour or a yellowy colour coming through as well. Now I've got her in the vehicle and I'm hightailing it. I'm driving the vehicle. Oh, man, she's screaming. She's 
screaming because she just wants her mum. Okay. Emberley? Emberley? Amberley's mum raised the alarm 45 minutes after she was last seen. Amber! Amber! Amberley! Everybody's searching, search, search, search. I can see boats. I can see... Oh, she's just made this huge search. She said, everybody went looking for me. I think I might be picking up on the mum's frantic time when she can't find her daughter, where she's gone missing. She's shown me the torches and the lights and things. Something about she's saying they can't find me. They must have had helicopters in the search because she's showing me them big time. It feels like the helicopter flew over her, like directly on top of her. Helicopter comes overhead. He's standing outside the truck. Looks like he's got a um, jacket over her and holding her down. So he's got one hand in the vehicle and he's waving to the helicopter with the other hand. Amber Lee's mother, Nikki, has always believed that her young daughter is still alive and being cared for by another family. To answer the question that's haunted Nikki all these years, Deb and Kelvin finally look at Amber Lee's photo. Um, as I'm looking at Amber, I'm getting a pain up the back of my neck and it's like my head's getting twisted, like cracked or something. The hard part to this is that there's a broken bone scenario and that would be indication to a broken neck. Because she keeps snap gone. It's all really happening just like that. Oh yeah, she's just pushing my neck like to one side. I just want everyone to know that's concerned for this little girl that uh, her passing was swift and she didn't suffer. And I know it's pretty hard to talk about, but I need to make sure that's very clear. Determined to uncover the identity of the man who committed this terrible crime, the psychics ask the spirit of Amber Lee to describe him. Um, we're going to go and try and work now with this little girl and see if we can get pictures from her or images from her to see if we can find out who took her. It's funny what drugs can do to a person's mind. The person who took her was loaded. The, we'll say, assailant that took her uh, is on chemicals somewhere along the lines. There's drugs in and around that person. Um, the aggressiveness that comes with the Abduction is pretty strong. You can see Jean's jacket I just got too. Like a like a winter jacket feel to it. I can smell, smell what looks smells like cigarette smoke, like rollies. Mm, port or drum, you know, that sort of scenario. Medium build type fella. To the slender type, not the um, big type. To me it'd be about five eight, five nine. Still looks quite young in the face, though. Yeah, she's giving me a big K. Big K. Like me, K. It's an initial K. Not K as in K-A-Y, but K. What are the intentions of taking this little girl? The only person that could take a child from a house was somebody who knew, A, that she was going to be there, and B, who knew that child and wanted that child for a reason. I don't know. I think it's got something to do with something else. Like, it's not as... Clean cut is just taking a child. There's something more. There's a connection to an aggressive person around her who has the need to be able to take this child away. He must be connected to someone else that's in the house. Like he knows of it. I'll get you back, you bitch. Next. The psychics are challenged to find the house where Amber Lee was last seen. Up about here. Uh, right here and they reveal more about her killer. You, the mother. I feel sick. It's all about money. Psychics Calvin Cruikshank and Deb Webber never met during filming, but their descriptions of Amber Lee Cruikshank's last moments are chillingly similar. Pain up the back of my neck. Broken neck. Cracked. Just like that. Snap gone. From a hotel in Queenstown on the shores of Lake Wakatipu, the psychics now attempt to locate on a map 
the place from which Amber Lee disappeared. Which way do I go? Amber? Where am I going this way? Over here. Show me. Kelvin uses his necklace as a pendulum, asking the spirit of Amber Lee to move it over the area. I'm over Kingston at the moment. Oh, that's down the lake, by the look of it. Oh, I see. She said, follow the water. So I've got to follow the water around there. That road to Kingston's quite tricky. So that's... She's been taken away from Kingston. And then I have to go up to the roundabout and then I go down through there to Kingston, where they were holidaying. Both psychics are correct. On different days, each is driven towards Kingston. As they approach, their visions of Amber Lee's abductor become clearer. Hunting geek's coming in really strong. Yeah, fishing's coming into it. A little bit of fishing. Maybe a little bit of hunting as well. I've got holding of the hand, so that indicates that she felt comfortable with him. This perpetrator knew the mother. The other thing I keep getting is a lot of anger. And I just, I just, just angry, like really, you know, pissed off about everything. It's all about money. It's not about sexual um, energy. I can't feel any sexual energy with her at all. I don't feel she was interfered with. I do not feel that at all. It went too far. It felt, it felt like it was just doing the wrong thing, doing a very, very awful thing, a very bad thing, but it went too far. I've got brown hair. I'd say it's either got shaven up the sides or something, because I get a vision of dark hair, but I get, like, shaven side bits. Now, there's a lot of drugs down here. Because I keep getting really, really drained and tired, like I just want to drop. And I think it's because I'm stoned. There could also be connections to drugs in around the mother. Maybe that's a possibility with her past, being a little bit colourful. Well, I'm not, but I feel like I am. But he was on drugs, I know that, because the drugs are so strong. The psychics have arrived in Kingston and are challenged to locate the house where Amber Lee was staying. It is on the lakefront in the second street on the right. Can you take it right here, Tim? Um, right, somewhere, I think. I might be a little bit too far up, actually. I'll have a look. Both psychics choose to turn right. Can we do a, a, a turn, please, Jeff? I think we have to turn again, Jeff. Um, right. Both psychics are approaching the house. Well, I think we're pretty damn close to it, to be totally honest. I feel sick. Somewhere just around here. Um, I feel like I want to get out. I must be pretty close to it. So this one, Jeff. This one back here. Yeah, whoa, 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 stop here. That road goes right through. That's a double-ended road, so that's the here, 52. That's the place I need to get out. Can I get out, please? It looks like that in my vision. This one, just here. <laughs> Both psychics have found the house, despite the fact that it has been totally renovated. Now they tune into what happened at this exact spot all those years ago. She said something about the driveway, didn't she, on the right hand? Um... That, that driveway? goes straight through because the person who's taken this child has taken her from over there. Just walks straight up to her. Yeah, and then takes her for a walk and that's where the vehicles... Well, I looked at the vehicle but it was away from the house a little bit. She's certainly been watched. She's been abducted. She's not in the lake. There's no way she's in that lake. Not, not on, your, on your life. There's more bush here back whenever the time was. It just seems this is not right as well. There's, there was it's a possibility there may have been a little bit more cover. Kelvin is correct. In 1992, the backyard, fronting onto the main road, was overgrown with bush and trees. Recently, it's been cleared. 
this is all tidied up. That way. No, that way. Here's the thing, this has changed as well. All these, these caravan things weren't there. There's, there's more cover. And so what's happened is the vehicle has been parked right here. Because he's got cover. Yeah, because I remember coming out to the Bitumen Road, turning right, go past the house. Something about here. I think there was a vehicle or something parked here, along here. The psychics have identified the same area where they believe the abductor's vehicle was parked. Yeah, I think they've come up with uh, a few points of interest. Both of them have mentioned that Amberley was abducted, taken, uh, round behind the house to Cornwall Street where they believe a vehicle was parked, a four-wheel drive type vehicle. Uh, both mentioned that she was put into the front seat and covered with something. When they talked about the offender, they both said that he had dark hair and that he had an association with hunting. And I know at least one of those points uh, was a focus uh, as part of the inquiry for the police. Bottom line is, you just don't take a child out of nowhere for nothing. She has to have known, or the partner or the father of this child has to have a link somewhere. If the father was in the bad books, for an example, if he was a dealer or something like that, or if he had a history, and somebody wanted to get him back, who are they going to hit? <laughs> oh, she just gone like that. She didn't toddle off. She didn't wander that way. She didn't go to the neighbours. She didn't come and play on the road. She was picked up, yeah. raced back out here, thrown into the, into the front of a vehicle, covered up with an oilskin coat, and driven off. I got a person who smells funny, who must have smoked rollies, who may have been a hunter or connection to the outdoors, um, who is in connection. How the heck would somebody know locally that these people were going to be here? It, it feels as if I've been followed, I've been targeted, I'm a target, I'm going to hurt the family. There is a somewhat some sort of history somewhere. <laughs> this is the end, this is it. The spirit of two and a half year old Amber Lee closes down on Deb. There's no, no vibration of this little girl here. I mean, her body is just not here. It does not feel right for me to say, oh, look, she's up on the hill, you know, she's, and, oh, she's in the lake. I'm sorry, people, but no way. No, I don't feel it here. Not at all. I can sort of more have a bit of a flash of it here, but not a feeling at all. Kelvin walks towards all that remains of Amber Lee in Kingston, the memorial plaque that her mother laid for her all those years ago. This morning before I left home, I picked this out of my son's room, and it's a rose quartz. And I've had it in my pocket all day, so I figured I'd save it for the right moment, and this is it. Turns out that Amber's middle name's Rose, and I'll leave that for her. And it's from my son and from me to her. Somebody has had a vendetta against one of those parents. This is payback, it's not just willy-nilly, it's payback. Next, Kelvin meets Amber Lee's mother, Nikki. Rip someone off, we've had information about something else. Who did you know? And we ask a psychic numerologist for more clues as the hunt for Amber Lee's killer intensifies. He does the wrong thing. The guy who took the little girl is definitely looking for a fire sign person. Communicating with a toddler is challenging at the best of times. While the psychics have discovered many new leads from the spirit of young Amber Lee Crookshank, we were determined not to leave any stone unturned. We asked a psychic numerologist to use a different approach to hunt for even more clues about her killer. Australian Scott Russell Hill was so traumatised the last time he visited New Zealand to work on a sensing murder case, he gave up crime work for several years. Whatever's gone on here recently is quite upsetting to me, and I'm finding it hard to, okay. to cope with it. Don't film me for a sec, mate, will you, please? Sure. 
When we asked Scott to help, he agreed, provided he could investigate the case from the safety of his own home in Adelaide. Scott works in numerology. He has no knowledge of the case and has only given Amber Lee's date of birth to help him tune in. So you're looking for a little girl? Gone missing, hasn't been found? Someone, she crossed paths with someone who knew her, knew of her. The first thing that's really strong with the date of birth that you've given me is that the most likely star sign of whoever the culprit is is Aries, Leo or Sag. You're looking for a fire sign person. So you're looking for someone who's born in April, August or December. Someone who lives very close to home, to where this little one used to live, has knowledge of the case. And I'm trying to connect them in. They're either known to the family, they were friends, or they were someone who had a familiarity. And earlier I felt, as, as strange as it may be, that there could be a familiarity to the little girl's mum. The guy, the guy who took the little girl is definitely married and has a family. He does physical stuff. He lifts crates and boxes and packs stuff and does stuff. He's quite fit, quite athletic and quite strong. But there's also the energy of growing dope and growing drugs and, and doing that as well. So on one hand, he's quite legitimate and on one hand, he does the wrong thing. Good girl. Whoever this little girl went missing with, I just can't get away from the fact that she's crossed paths with somebody who knew her, who lived in her area and just happened to be in the same spot. You're looking for um, a man who's in his late 30s or early 40s too, but Aries Leo Sag. Like Scott, Kelvin is convinced Amber Lee's mother knew the abductor. He is certain the motive was revenge. Kelvin insists on meeting Nikki in an effort to reveal more clues that will unmask her daughter's killer. Two weeks after Kelvin's initial reading, we bring Nikki and Kelvin together in Wellington. The reading takes place on a significant day. Um, today's a special day for Amber. Um, it's her birthday today. Firstly, I will acknowledge that your daughter is definitely in spirit. You know, she's never far from you. She's always around you. She's always there to be able to say, Mum, it's OK. It's OK, it's not your fault. And I think that's the big thing for me today, to just release that from you. Because I know that you've blamed yourself for a very long time. And that's not what we're here for. We're not here to blame anyone. We're here to help you. With, with, with our past, you right? Well, it's a big ass of tissues. <laughs> I'm going to say this very clearly. I believe at some point of your life, either yours or the father of Amber Lee, some, one of you have done either a bad deal, you've ripped someone off, you've pissed them off so much, or you've had information about something else that I'm going to get you back. So effectively, we need to work together with that. Think about it for a second. It doesn't take much for somebody to go snap. <laughs> It takes one shoddy deal. It's just who? Now the images that I've had have been somebody's parked a vehicle outside, walked in, grabbed and walked off with her underneath the arm. That's got to be the noise I heard. So what was the noise? It was just a noise like someone was there. But when I stood up and asked if anyone was there, there was nobody there. Okay. And I couldn't see anyone. Hmm. If we try and focus on perhaps what Amberly said and what she did say was she knew who it was and that's why she felt comfortable at first until he picked her up, lifted her. And the question is, did the, the killer know us before we went to Kingston? Did they follow us there? Did I ever upset somebody who was a grower, who might have proclaimed to be a hunter, um, but who was effectively just going to check his plants? You know what I'm saying? You need to think about that. Because I can't, because I wasn't there. 
Who did you know? Anyone could have four drive that's covered in muddy smokes drum. Anyone. But Anne Bleed told me she knew him. Because I can see her looking up at him. Have any facial hair or anything like that? Um, I'd have to go to a mo directly. Just work it out, work it out, work it out, just slowly and piece it together. And then you'll find there would be one thing that tips someone off. Whether there's a drug deal gone wrong, if you've ripped somebody off, then you'll need to really search yourself for that. Can I ask you how she met her fate? How do you know she's on the other side? Well, that's a really good question. I had to check in with myself initially to see if she actually had passed. Um, I would dearly love to say that she's living somewhere in, in Australia in an isolated place somewhere, um, running around happy and looking real pretty, but I'm sorry, she's just, she's not. And it doesn't mean to say she's in a bad place. What happened to your daughter, I believe that she was, if you want me to tell you the truth, I believe your daughter was strangled. And I believe that she was, um, for one of words, passed away extremely quickly. She was not sexually assaulted, and I'm delighted to say that because it's the last thing I want to be sitting here telling you. With all due respect to you, your past has caught you big time. But it's not your fault. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Unfortunately, some nasty person who's been in and around your life at that time has decided to seek revenge. All right, darling, I'll tell her. She just wants me to let you know that she loves you. She misses you, and you didn't do anything wrong. Circumstances happen. You're a good mum, but you've also been a pretty rough mum at points too. But sweetheart, who hasn't? Who hasn't? I guess I need just to say to you, as a closure for you, I'm happy to leave your daughter's love with you, and I'm sorry for your loss. But she's in a good place, okay? <laughs> you right? Mm. Next, a team of investigators follow up the psychic's leads, and Nikki recalls forgotten conflicts. Several days after the reading, Nikki made a startling revelation. By tuning into the spirit of two and a half year old Amber Lee Crookshank, the sensing murder psychics have come up with new insights that may be relevant to the murder inquiry. Duncan Holland and his team of investigators are former detectives who have used conventional methods to research the psychic's findings. Their aim? To produce cold, hard facts. My team has investigated the psychic's leads and has come up with information about a possible new suspect in the Amberley Crookshank murder inquiry. Somebody has had a vendetta. Somebody wanted to get him back? I'll get you back, you bitch. Psychic Kelvin Crookshank was convinced that Amberley's abduction was payback. Kelvin had no idea that Nikki had already raised the question of a vendetta. Where did I go wrong? Why did this happen to me? Is it some vendetta against me? You ripped someone off. Kelvin pressed Nikki to remember who might be seeking revenge. Did I ever upset somebody who was a grower? Did the killer know us before? It doesn't take much for somebody to go snap. Did they follow us there? It takes one shoddy deal. You need to think about that. And then you'll find there would be one thing that tips someone off. Kelvin's insistence paid off. Several days after the reading, Nikki made a startling revelation. There was someone in her past who may have had a motive to seek revenge. In the week before they left for Kingston, Nikki and her partner James had a major falling out with a friend over a cannabis plot they shared. If the father was in the bad books, for example, if he was a dealer or something like that. Where is it? There's also the energy of growing dope and growing drugs. Where's the dope? But he was on drugs, I know that, because the drugs are so strong. You were last up there. I was just angry. Their friend was furious because the cannabis plants were missing. Nikki remembers a vicious argument when their friend accused them of stealing the plants. Away from my kid! You're a psycho, get out! Someone who lives very close to home, to where this little one used to live, has knowledge of the case. This man lived near Amberley and her family before they set off in their house bus. It's interesting because he's got a familiarity about him. I just asked if she knew who took her and she nodded her head. <laughs> She's crossed paths Yay. with somebody who knew her. 
who, who lived in her area and just happened to be in the same spot. All of the psychics were convinced that the abductor knew Amber Lee. She's seen him before or knows him. In fact, the person Nikki remembers knew Amber Lee well. Something to do with hunting. The hunting geeks coming in really strong. Maybe a little bit of hunting as well. This man was a hunter. Even a four-wheel drive connection. There's a van or a four-wheel drive. It's not new. It's old. I get the white, but I'm getting blends of colours. There seems to be a yellowy colour coming through as well. This man drove a four-wheel drive, similar to that described by Deb. The most likely star sign of whoever the culprit is is Aries Leo or Sag. This man is a Sagittarian. You're looking for um, a man who's in his late 30s or early 40s too. This man is in his early 50s now, but in 1992 was in his late 30s. I've got brown hair. I'd say shaving up the sides or something. Anything facial hair? I'd have to go to a moat. To me, it'd be about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, he does physical stuff. He lifts crates and boxes. Smells like cigarette smoke, like rollies. He's definitely married and has a family. Each of these details matches the man who had the falling out with Nicky and James, as he was in 1992. Calvin also identified the first letter of one of his names. Now just give me a big K. Big K. K like me, K. It's an initial K. Before travelling to Kingston, Nikki was warned by a clairvoyant that the letter K was significant. Well, I believe the letter K stood for Kingston and maybe I should have taken more heed. Nikki thought the K referred to Kingston, but it may refer to one of the offender's initials. They'd only travelled to Kingston on that day and no one knew of their travels. The police always thought that no one knew the family was travelling to Kingston. But following her meeting with Kelvin, Nikki recalled that she had told several people, including this man, about their plans to go to Kingston. It feels as if I've been followed, I've been targeted, I'm a target. Our investigations have revealed this man travelled out of town over the exact period Amber Lee went missing. The man that matches the psychic's description has never been interviewed by police. Nikki had never told police about the argument or the possible vendetta against them. During our investigation, we uncovered other information that is too sensitive to be included in this program. We have now passed this information on to Invercargill Police. Bottom line is, you just don't take a child out of nowhere for nothing. There's something more. Someone has knowledge of the case. If you have any information about the disappearance of Amberley Crookshank, please contact Detective Sergeant John Kane at Invercargill Police on 03 211 0400. If you have any information about the psychic's findings, please log on to tvnz.co.nz and enter the keyword sensing. As time goes on, allegiances change, people mature, um, their, uh, their morals might change, uh, their values might change. And so if there is somebody out there who does know what's happened to Amber Lee, um, I would say go forward in confidence to the police and tell them what's happened. If you have my little girl, I'd like her back. She belongs to me. She's out there somewhere. You're my little girl, you always will be, and I'll never give up hope trying to find you. Amber Lee's mother, Nikki, has endured almost two decades of heartache, not knowing if her daughter is dead or alive. Tragically, the psychics believe she died soon after she was abducted. You're right. For Nikki, closure will only come when she can give her daughter the funeral she deserves, and when the person who took her life is behind bars. Yeah. Not being able to say goodbye with her not knowing that's, yeah, it's not good. If people out there know, I just wish that somehow, some way, they would get word and tell me what happened to Amber Lee or where she is. Next week on Sensing Murder, Judy York asked her parents to babysit her daughter. She loved her kids. She loved them heaps. When she didn't turn up for her daughter's fourth birthday, her family reported her missing. Were there people at the party who potentially had the motive to kill Judy York? Yes, there was. No, it doesn't feel right here, eh? He waited to dump the body. He's going to have to come back here and face his juke. That's what she's telling me. We have uncovered some stunning new information.